Now, Al Gore's inconvenient truth. In May, our nation was exposed to perhaps one of the slickest science, science uh, propaganda films of all time, former Vice President Gore's An Inconvenient uh, Truth, in, a, uh, in addition to having the backing of Paramount Pictures to the market of this film, Gore had the full backing of the media. The leading, uh, leading the cheerleading charge was none other than the Associated Press. And of course, they had the, uh, the uh, elitists from, uh, from Hollywood. On June 27th, the Associated Press ran an article by Seth Borenson that boldly declared scientists give two thumbs up to Gore's movie. The article quoted only five scientists. Two thumbs up, five scientists. Uh, they were praising Gore's science, despite AP, the Associated Press, having contacted over 100 scientists. The fact that over 80% of the scientists contacted by AP had not even seen the movie or that many scientists have harshly criticized the science presented by Gore did not dissuade the news outlet one bit from its mission to promote Gore as a brand of climate uh, uh, alarmism. Let's keep in mind, they said it's a thumbs up, 100% of the scientists, and it was only five out of 100. I'm almost at a loss as to how to begin to address the serious uh, the series of errors, misleading science, and unfounded speculation that appear in the former vice president's film uh, and in his book of the same name. Now, the, uh, here, here's what Richard Lindzen, he's a meteorologist uh, from MIT, what he's written about the inconvenient truth. Now, he's talking about Al Gore and his movie. And this is a scientist, Richard Lindzen. He's a meteorologist from MIT. He said, a, a general characteristic of Mr. Gore's approach is to ignore the fact that the Earth and its climate are dynamic. They are always changing, even without any external forcing. To treat all changes as something to fear is bad enough. To do so in order to exploit that fear is much worse, which is exactly what Al Gore is doing. What follows is a brief summary of the science that the former vice president promotes in either a wrong or misleading way. He promoted the now-debunked hockey stick temperature chart in an attempt to prove man's overwhelming impact on the climate. He attempted to minimize the significance of the middle, medieval warming period or the Little Ice Age. He insists on a link between increased hurricane activity and global warming that most scientists believe does not exist. He asserted that today's article is experiencing Arctic is experiencing unprecedented warmth while ignoring the temperatures in the 1930 were, were warmer than they are today. He claimed the Arctic, Antarctic was warmer and losing ice, but failed to note that is only true of a small region. The vast bulk has been cooling and gaining ice. This is the Antarctic. He hyped unfounded fears that Greenland's ice is in danger of disappearing. He erroneously claimed that the ice cap on Mount Kilimanjaro is disappearing due to a global warming, even while the region cools and researchers blame the ice loss on local land use practices. What they're talking about here is they had deforested the area down below, and that was the reason it had nothing to do uh, with, uh, with CO2, obviously. He made uh, assertions of massive future sea level rise that is uh, way outside of any supposed scientific consensus and is not supported in even the most alarmist literature. He incorrectly applied that the, a Peruvian glacier's retreat is due to global warming by ignoring the fact that the region has been cooling since the 1930s and other glaciers in South America are advancing. He blamed global warming for a water loss in Africa's Lake Chad, despite a NASA scientists concluding that local population and, and grazing factors are more likely the culprits. He inaccurately claimed polar bears are drowning in significant numbers due to melting ice when the fact is they're thriving. He completely failed to inform viewers that a, the 48 scientists who accused President Bush of distorting science were part of a political advocacy group set up to support the Democrat presidential candidate John Kerry in 2004. Now, that was just a brief sampling of some of the errors presented in, in Inconvenient Truth. Imagine how long the list would have been if I had actually seen the movie. There wouldn't be enough time to deliver the speech today.